Hi everybody, uh, my name is Evan Wu. I'm from a company called Dulux Group. Uh, just to give you a bit of background, Dulux Group is a leading marketer and manufacturer of premium products um, that are used to protect, maintain and, and enhance the spaces that we live and work in. So particularly in the DIY market, uh, we play a huge part, but we also have a, a um, big commercial uh, trade and um, also retail sectors. So what I'm here to talk to you guys about today is basically our uh, one of the use cases that we find really um, helpful uh, for us with Datadog. So our state of cells, we have a lot, of, we're very uh, host, um, host based, uh, host heavy based. So a lot of our workloads reside on virtual uh, on a virtual machines, um, some based in cloud, also others based on a hypervisor like VMware and Hyper-V. Now within that, um, obviously, Datadog can collect quite a lot of metrics and monitor a lot of things. However, making use of those and particularly with the integrations within the Datadog suite, it's kind of enabled us to have a very diverse and flexible arrangement in order to automate some of the um, service management incident flow and process that we have when we need to identify what's happening and also to troubleshoot the issue. So what's uh, some of the integrations that we that are available within, um, within Datadog itself are uh, the ones that we take advantage of and some that I'll take you through guys through today. So this is a live demo, so hope it uh, works really well. And um, so I'm just going to create a new monitor metric. So this is a fairly basic functionality um, that a lot of people do use when they have, uh, when they do use Datadog. So just to do a really simple one, say there's idle time, uh, and I'm gonna select the SAP environment. So we've pre-tagged our SAP environments which is a core ERP system. So a lot of organizations are going to use, uh, um, you know, say uh, some of the, they're gonna have some really critical business applications. So we've identified that as our uh, SAP ERP system, for example. Uh, I'm not too really concerned about development. So I wanna exclude our development environment. So it'll only be production. And uh, just as a value, because it is, idle time you want it to be below so if it hits below five percent say on an average for more than 10 minutes then i want a monitor to trigger on one of our workloads now here's where the interesting part comes is you could say well i want to be notified and say cpu high on a particular host name And so obviously I wanted to notify myself. So I'm going to say, please email myself. Uh, and that's a fairly basic functionality, but it's mainly within Datadog, some of the integrations we set up that allow us to go beyond that. So for example, if it's um, after hours or if the event triggers on the weekend, or if I'm in the middle of a meeting, I may not check my emails very often. So. I want it to also send me a SMS as well. So I've also set up an SMS notification through a webhook and our um, SMS provider. So when once that integration set up, it will also not only will it send me an email, but it will also send me an SMS. On top of that, perhaps I don't want uh, an SMS. There are other kind of mechanisms in which to do that. So the one of the most other common common integrations that uh, that I think people will use out there is Microsoft Teams. So if you're a Microsoft Teams or Office 365 customer and you use Microsoft Teams, then Teams could also be another avenue in which you could notify uh, the appropriate people for the alert. Now with Teams, I think one of thing one of the good things is that it also you can also install it on a mobile app. Uh, Datadog itself also has a mobile app. So these kind of alerts can come through on your phone as a push notification rather than um, rather than using it as a SMS. Or if you didn't want it to receive it as an SMS, you could receive it as an application or a push notification to an app on your phone. 
Um, further to that, we also want to perhaps audit it. So uh, in this case, we also take advantage of the ServiceNow, in, uh, ServiceNow integration. So I'm just going to choose, now within ServiceNow, I have, this is just a development environment, of course, but in, in essence, I want um, this monitor, this trigger to log an incident ticket within ServiceNow. Now within that, uh, I could assign the particular group. And I'll show you guys um, a bit after this. So I'll just move this from here. And after that, um, you can save the monitor or say I wanted to test it to see how it actually goes. Um, I want to send an alert, so let's run a test. And it's test says sent. Uh, say, for example, if the event re-triggers, so I'm, I'm just going to do a re-trigger. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate exactly what happens, particularly with the ServiceNow integration that I really like. So, it's, uh, I've just run two tests on this notification. Now, just going to have a look here um, to firstly show you on my phone. Uh, I now have um, two text messages. Uh, that's, been in the that's two text messages from Datadog as well. So within those text messages, you can actually specify exactly what you want in that alert um, in this, particular instance, um, I've just said it's just CPU high, so I'm going to get a text message. Um, I've also just got an email alert, which uh, I'll just share on the screen here, which details exactly what's happened. Um, the CPU on a, on a SAP server is less than, you know, the idle time is less than five over the last 10 minutes. So that's also um, how it arrives via email. And just to, I'll refresh this page. So within ServiceNow, uh, you can see here there is now an incident that now has been logged um, just now at 2.30. So this incident as well is assigned to the Wintel queue, which is what I've specified. Again, the details of that alert and what's happened. And yeah, so you can start to see how it can, um, because I triggered it twice, you can see that the second trigger actually appended the, the details into the same ticket. So it's not logging hundreds and hundreds of tickets if the alert keeps re-triggering. It's only, it's only uh, keeping the same incident, but just appending to the notes. So what I find is that that's actually really um, powerful in that regard. And this is the Microsoft Teams that I've just um, that I've just set up so as a test. So you can see here as well, it's posted to Teams. You can check this as well on your phone as an app and you can have a push notification sent out. So that as well is really powerful. And basically what it does is it provides options and Teams isn't the only integration. There are other integrations such as um, Jira or Jira, whichever you use. So all of these different options in order for us to manage our alerts and service incident management processes. So it's, uh, I think that's one really powerful element of the tool is that it allows that flexibility, it allows uh, you to start and automate a process and in order to, you know, I guess, just further focus your energy. It helps you focus more energy on actually resolving the issue and um, you know, going through the processes that are you know, part of incident management. So yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today and I hope you learned something. Cheers, bye.